Just get ready to film this stuff. this year I got a call from a friend offering me a Honda 400EX. We estimate that it's been sitting in a barn in this condition since the early 2000s. The previous owner never even saw this quad run. This was inherited in a lot of machines and just kind of kicked to the side and sat in the back of the barn for decades. Now the condition that I received this thing in is partially torn down. I have no idea what's going on with the bottom end. The top end was entirely missing from this thing. So will we be able to get this thing running? Uh, probably. Will it be easy? Probably not. Let's get into it. All right, now first things first, let's get a look at this thing and see what we're working with. At least it rolls nice. Let's see if it goes in gear. That's always a good sign. Take these plastics off so we can see. Oh, that's nice. All right, now we actually got a little bit of a head start on this thing. Got brand new tires on here, compliments of lionparts.com. They saw I was working with some dry rotted scat and they decided to send me these brand new itp whole shot gncc tires i've never run these before i rode them on pete hager's raptor and i really liked them but i've never had them on a personal quad they're kind of like narrow and balloonish looking but the way they were on pete's i really liked them so i think they're going to be great for this build and the other thing i did is i swapped out the bars because they were bent and the clutch lever had the uh, the clunky parking brake and stuff on there. Got rid of that. The only other thing that I did is I pulled the cylinder off. It came with no head. There was no head on it. It was just a cylinder and a piston. I pulled that off just so that I can inspect the rod and everything. And it turns out the cylinder, the sleeve uh, was dropping in the cylinder. So instead of repairing that, I just got a whole new kit. We're gonna do an entirely new top end. Uh, but there was no head on it. There was no gas tank. I had to buy the gas tank. I got that on eBay for like 50 bucks. The rest of it though, as far as I can remember, I haven't touched anything. It, it doesn't look too bad. This is a 99. There's a good amount of aftermarket stuff on it. The swing arm, it's definitely aftermarket and it's definitely longer than stock. We got Burgard A-arms. A lot of Burgard stuff on here. These are old school. Probably I'm gonna guess they're plus two, plus ones. Some uh, custom voltage. Look at this one. You can see that's, that's the OEM bolt. I think I have some of these OEM bolts, so I'll probably swap that out. Uh, just to clean up the look a little bit, make everything match. It's got works, triple rate shocks, and I think these are in really good shape too. The suspension feels good. I was jumping up and down right here. And uh, those, I think those shocks are actually not, I don't wanna say they're fairly new, but they, I don't think they have much time on them. I have no idea what all this is. Uh, I'm sure all that'll be fine. I don't know if this is some kind of custom wiring for headlights. I'll probably just delete all of that stuff. This is an electron carburetor that it came with. Thing looks old as dirt, but I think it works. It just needs to be cleaned really well. Not gonna be running that. I don't know what the heck is up with this peg. This is some kind of weird aftermarket peg. If you look at this side, this one's OEM. And then over here, like I, I just don't know what's going on. It's lower. It almost looks like it was like, like custom made. Maybe, I don't know. But I got some uh, replacement OEM pegs. There was no battery, no battery tray, no battery strap. All that stuff is missing. We have a custom tail light. Doesn't look horrible. If it works, we we'll probably rock it. It's got an extended axle, probably plus two, plus four. Got the anti-fade back here. Good stuff. It's just been sitting forever. I don't know, and everything actually feels pretty tight. 
The steering even feels tight. The stem is slightly bent. So I'm going to see if I can find a machine shop that straightens boat props. And we'll see if we can straighten that stem out because that's a nice Brigard, probably like plus two stem or something. I'd like to reuse that. It's definitely not worth getting rid of. Plastics are in fairly good shape. Got some Power Mad guards up here. I don't know if I'll run those. Maybe, maybe not. And then the front plastics, these look really thrashed, but I don't think they're as bad as they look. So this is the worst of it right here where it's like ripped. But um, when that goes together like that, I'm pretty sure that this quad tech hood will cover that and it won't really be a problem. This is a really rare piece right here. You don't see these things anymore, man. Quad tech carbon fiber hood. It's in good shape too. It's got a couple scratches and stuff on it, but we take off that Burgard sticker, clean it up, put some SC1 on there, and that's gonna look pretty new. Bottom end feels good. The rod is nice and tight. The rod looks good. Bottom end looks good. Uh, we'll probably flush it a few times. I'm not planning on taking this apart. There's a couple things on here I wanna swap out, like up here. You can see somebody put these rinky-dink uh, washers and bolts up there. Hopefully they're not like quarter 20s that are cross-threaded in there. I don't know. As long as the bottom end feels tight, I don't really think it's necessary to pull that apart. This isn't gonna be like a complete restoration or anything like that. This is basically to make everything function, get all the bearings tight, just make it run like an absolute ace and just will make it look good. It's not gonna look like crap, but it's not gonna be like a complete do everything up. So just keep that in mind during this video, guys. All right, now I looked this thing over really thoroughly, I think, and uh, I think I have all the parts ordered. I ordered them a little while ago and I tried to collect everything so that we can get this thing completely together and running all in this video. That's my goal. So I'm staring at the box right here. I'm gonna pull this thing out and we're gonna get all the parts out of here and I'll show you what we have. All right, so I've got all of our parts laid out here. I think we have everything that we need to finish this project all in one shot. Crossing my fingers here, I don't know. So we might as well just get started right here. I'll just kind of go over everything that I got. This is a hot cam stage three. Just because it's stage three doesn't mean it's better than stage two. Stage three is higher RPM. Stage two would be mid range. I ran the stage two in the last 400X, loved it. Uh, we're gonna see if the stage three gets us a little bit better performance. But then I have a JE 11 to one piston. This is an 88 millimeter, making it a 426. Man, is she sweet. Pistons really are just cool, man. I say it every single time. It's a shame that you can't see them. Can you imagine if the cylinder was clear and then it didn't get dark from all the carbon buildup and you could just see the piston all the time? That would be freaking sweet. I felt like it was more cost effective to use a, a, a no-name brand cylinder. So I've, I ran this in the 400EX build, the 416. We beat the crap out of that thing. Uh, I sold it to a subscriber. He's been beating the crap out of it and still I don't think he's had any issues with it. So I just don't see a problem running one of these. It's more cost effective and it was way quicker than fixing the OEM one. So that's what we're going with. It is the 88 millimeter to match the JE piston. Uh, I have a new cam cover there. Of course, we got our head, this uh, totally missing piece. So BP Racing ATV was kind enough to send us this one. It's got some brand new gaskets from BP Racing ATV, um, a new clutch cable from Tusk. And then we got an HMF exhaust. There was no exhaust on this thing. So now we got a brand new HMF. Thank you to lionparts.com for sending this thing. I've always liked HMF. I think they sound really good and they make good performance as well. Finishing up the engine parts, we have a Tusk competition clutch kit. Thank you to Rocky Mountain ATV. Also got a Tusk uh, heavy duty spring kit. And then I ordered a uh, stainless steel bolt kit from Alloy Bolts just for the engine. We have heavy duty studs from BP Racing ATV. We got kibble white valves. Uh, we've got a new timing chain. Oh, the kibble white valves are up there. There's that rebuild kit for the head. And I think that's pretty much all the engine parts. Then we have up here is a new carburetor. I was going to do a 37 millimeter FCR style carb. And just for simplicity, I decided to go with OEM. This is a replica carburetor. It looks really good though. This is from Zoom Zoom Parts. And supposedly it takes the OEM jets and works really well. So that's gonna keep things simple. And of course we got the AP3 red lines that we're gonna put on there. That's gonna make it match and just look really trick. Uh, then this is the battery. This was the, uh, this was the cheapest. Well, actually it wasn't the cheapest battery. It was the quickest battery. The quickest battery I could find. Uh, this was on Amazon Prime. I got it one day. I ordered this yesterday. Mighty Max battery. You know it's good. And plus, the bike on here is red, so it's made for Honda. Then I have a whole bunch of just miscellaneous Honda parts. I got a new spark plug in there. I went over everything. You can see a strap for the tank. I just kind of went over everything on the bike and tried to be as prepared as possible. I put the tank out here because I had to buy that. That was an eBay part. Uh, that is the top motor mount part. Battery strap, battery box. Those are some OEM pegs that I bought off of eBay, some used ones. We'll replace that weird janky one. 
Uh, some ASV levers. I'm not sure if we're going to run those or not, but they're so badass, I feel like we have to. And then I have the under tank, um, I guess, splash guard slash heat shield. That was missing as well. And then I've got an AC new old stock bumper. Picked that up off of eBay. There was no bumper on this quad. You got to have a bumper, and I think that'll look pretty trick. And then last but not least, I had my graphics made. So in the Grape Ape video, I got a bunch of comments, people saying, who made your graphics, all that stuff. So I design my graphics myself. I make it in Photoshop and Illustrator, and then AGMX prints them. Um, but, but a lot of people were asking about like the design. Uh, that's, that's me, man. So uh, I designed my graphics. This is my new logo up here. See, I still got the gear in the background. Tried to like modernize it. I don't know. You guys let me know in the uh, comment section below what you think of that. But I thought this would be a good project to kind of introduce that logo. So my plan of action is to first get the machine running. We'll put the top end on there, make sure that everything's cool with the bottom end, get the cl uh, new clutch in there, um, set up all the cables and whatnot, make sure the wire harness, all that stuff is okay. And uh, I just want to make sure that we have a running machine here, because if it's not, we might have to pull the bottom end and do all that BS. And um, then we'll move on to all the odds and ends, you know, making it actually nice, taking care of you know, the aesthetics and stuff, putting the graphics and stuff on there. This shouldn't be really that bad of a project. So I say we just hop right into it. Before I do that though, if you guys are enjoying this video, please give me a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button. I love all you guys. All right, let's get to it. Ooh, this is a little scary. I don't know if you guys can see, I can see liquid down there. I hope it's oil <laughs> because this thing sat outside for a little bit. It actually looks okay. Let's drain it and see what comes out. All right, now I drained the oil tank as well, and that bolt was just as stuck as the one on the engine. The engine oil is like this almost like tacky texture. It's kind of weird. But anyways, I want to flush it. So what I'm going to do is use some of this 15 weight 40 oil. And the reason I chose this oil is because it says performance on it. Actually, the reason I chose this is because it's been in the shed for like five years or so, and I'm probably never going to use it. So for this purpose, at least, it will help flush out whatever kind of oil has been sitting in there for the last two decades. So I'm going to put it through the oil tank, try to get that running through the oil line, and I'll also just dump a little bit right into the crankcase and just kind of flush it out a little bit. Now, ideally, if I had kerosene, that would work really well, but I don't have any right now. Well, our oil lines must be clogged because... This has a quart and a half of oil in it, and I just checked out the dipstick. It's nice and full. And, well, you guys won't be able to see in there, but there is no oil in that crankcase, and I don't think there's any oil in the clutch case either. So I'll drain that out, and I guess we'll have to pull the oil lines off and blow those out, make sure that they're flowing. You can see they go right into the side of the clutch cover right here. This lower one should be feeding right into the clutch cover, and then there are ports that go into the center cases and there is just there's nothing in there you can see down to the bottom of the cases so not a big deal we have to take off the clutch cover anyways because we want to uh, switch out that clutch with a competition clutch and i want to see what's in there too maybe we've got like a hinson basket or something who knows so there's the oil from the tank flushing it so that's actually the fresh oil you can see all the grime that came out with it so that i'd show you that flush really works. And it looks like the oil coming out is clear now. Definitely needed to be flushed. We'll do the same thing with the crankcase once we get those lines cleaned up. All right, let's get this clutch cover off. First thing we'll do is take off the brake so that's not in the way. Take the brake pedal off anyways. dry. Looks pretty dirty. Not as bad as I thought it would be though. Ugh. Wow. That was really stuck on there. Oh man, I can see the gasket behind it. It's gonna be a lot of fun cleaning that off. It really doesn't look that bad. This actually looks really good. Everything's pretty clean. There's like a little thin layer of sludge on the bottom there. I'm sure once we heat this thing up with oil a couple times, that'll all work its way through the system. 
and we can flush that out. I don't see any broken gears, uh, nothing in the channels or anything, like broken um, you know, gears off of our transmission or anything. The clutch looks really good. Can't really tell without pulling it apart, but you can see the thickness of the fibers. So we're gonna pull that off, but I really don't think we're gonna have any problems. And I also wanna replace the timing chain too. So we'll go in there, pull that stuff out, inspect it, swap out the chain, swap out the clutch. Had to show this to you guys. This is either all OEM and has never been touched or somebody replaced all these components. So you can see the little crush mark right there. That's an OEM thing. Usually there's multiple like ripples in this bolt because it's been crushed multiple times or it's just jimmied up. Like this shaft doesn't even have any marks in it. Either this is all brand new components. Somebody went in here, went in here and replaced it or this is original and it's just super low hours. That's actually what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna lean towards because the rest of the, I mean, there's no boot rub or anything on here. I think this is just a really low hour machine. Also, these clutch fibers are OEM. I'm 99% sure those are OEM and they have tons of life left. So they could just be a brand new OEM parts that were replaced. I just doubt it. I have a feeling this is all OEM. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear this apart now. Oh, it's actually not that bad. All right, guys, just have a look at what we have here. This stuff is in really good shape. This clutch cover cleaned up really nice. You think that looks good? Wait till you see the underside. Literally brand new. Uh, I cleaned the gasket material off. And I mean, it came off, I'm not gonna say easy, but uh, just took a razor and very gently, you don't wanna score it, it came up pretty easily. Probably got the whole thing off in like two, three minutes, which is, that's quick, man. If you take off gaskets, it's, it's always a pain in the ass. And then um, real quick, hit it on the surfacing plate over there. That's just a, a perfectly flat piece of granite with, uh, I think that is 240 grit on there right now. I usually use 240 to 320. Uh, but yeah, so I cleaned this up, that cleaned up. Super nice. While we're talking about surfacing, I'll show you. Got the gasket material off of the case side also. Uh, also came off fairly easy. All I used was a razor blade on that. I don't think we have to touch that any further. Flushed the crankcase again, and I took the bottom hose off of the oil tank, and I flushed this out. This flows nice and good now, so we shouldn't have any issues with oil flow. I didn't want to have to worry about that because the best thing we need is a quad with no oil, even though if any quad can run without oil, it's a 400 EX. So back to these parts, everything is in really good condition. We got the oil pump right here, flush that out. Everything uh, works nice and good in that. The clutch basket looks good. There is a small amount of grooving. It's not bad though. You can feel it to the touch just a little bit. I'm gonna leave it. I don't really think we're gonna have any problems. The inner hub looks really good. All of our surfaces are nice and smooth. You can't feel any grooves or nothing. I have a feeling this is going to be a very smooth, uh, perfectly functioning clutch. And you guys, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna get beat up for this or not, but. These plates are in such good shape. I think I'm gonna put them back in there. I think it would be a waste to throw these out. I mean, I'm gonna say this is like 90%, if not more. I'm gonna guess it was recently replaced because uh, I was gonna say super low hour, but I don't think you'd have grooves like that from super low hour. I think this is still like a fairly low hour machine, but that's probably just a new OEM clutch. I, I, really the biggest reason I wanna use it is because it's OEM. The OEM clutches are really good. Now what we'll do is we'll just switch out the springs, which these are OEM also. They had the yellow paint on them. Uh, washed off in the parts washer. I'm just going to switch that out with the um, high performance uh, tusk springs just so we get a little bit more pressure because we're going to the 426 kit. Chain slides look okay. All of our gears look good. Uh, got all our bolts cleaned up and lined up. Uh, the, actually, the timing chain, what is that? Wow. I was about to say the timing chain was good. Check this out. I literally just found this broken. That probably would have caused an issue. Probably would have failed eventually. I'm really glad I saw that. I mean, I was gonna replace it anyways, but uh, this is like one of those cheap insurance items, putting a timing chain on. 
it's just it makes sense if you're going in an engine to switch it out uh so that's going to get replaced i guess that wasn't in as good of condition as i was about to say it was and uh, the rest of this stuff is it's just like odds and ends but yeah so that should all go together really nice and easy before i put that stuff on i'm gonna go ahead and switch out these two mickey mouse looking bolts that just looks like crap and i also want to take off the air filter clean it now's a good time to do that so that uh, it has time to dry while we're doing all this work this can be interesting and fun at times to see what's going on in an air filter some people just literally it's like they never clean their air filters and then they wonder why their quads don't run right it's not looking that bad though this just looks dirty but otherwise, I mean, the nice thing about K&Ns is you can clean them pretty much no matter what and reuse them. And it's a real K&N, it's not a knockoff, that's good. This thing is crusty, man. I wonder if this dude ever cleaned this stuff. This is definitely clogged. It doesn't look horrible uh, just looking at it, but it, you can, it's definitely, this thing is caked with dirt. I'll clean this thing out and uh, it should function like brand new. All right, let's get these two Mickey Mouse bolts off. Wow, that's not good. I see why they had that big ass washer on there now. The one leg is busted off. I really hope this isn't like a quarter 20 or something that they just cross threaded in here because people do stuff like that, man. F Weird. Did this break? I don't even know. Or is this just a really short bolt? It's broken. Now that right there, that is magnificent. Must have been cross threaded or somebody threw some JB Weld in there. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. At least this one over here is good. Ugh. There's a part of me that just wants to repair the one leg and use one bolt, but we gotta drill it and we gotta fix it. All right, I'll have to repair that hole. But before I do that, let's see if our starter's even any good um, before we attempt to save this thing, because if it, it might not even work. So I've got a jumper box here. I'm gonna connect one down here, the negative. And then we're just gonna touch the positive up here. All right, starter is good. Now, you can get aftermarket starters really cheap, like 40, 50 bucks, I would imagine. I didn't even, without even looking, especially 400EX might even be cheaper, but I really like to keep OEM stuff. This is the OEM starter. So realistically, this back post, there's not really any up or down uh, stress that's going to be on it because this thing slides out um, really that's really the, the only pressure is going to be stopping is forced this way so if i oh god you guys are going to kill me if i jb weld this like that the jb weld barely even has to do anything this basically this could pop this could really be put into place with no um epoxy and it would still hold the starter in place because it's just stopping it from pulling out this way so I'm gonna clean this up really good, put some JB Weld on there. And honestly, I don't think that's ever gonna be an issue. I'm guessing that this broke, probably it was removed at some point in time and, and it was dropped and that it probably just hit just right and snapped it right off. So I don't think it's worth uh, getting rid of the starter. Might as well just, like I said, JB Weld. Uh, yeah, so we'll clean this thing up since it works and uh, I'll JB Weld that. Then I'll get on to fixing up the stupid bolt hole. I love strip bolt holes. Okay, so that little thread stunt that we just did there that you guys watched and took about 15 seconds, well, that was about an hour and a half to get that damn thing out. I didn't even get it out. It was so seized in there, I ended up, I tried drilling it, then I broke a drill bit. If you guys have ever done that before, that's a nightmare. And I mean, I don't know if it was like a hardened bolt or what, because leading up to that, I just could not get the damn thing out. Uh, I ended up having to use a burr and like grinding out the entire thing and then I re-threaded it, but it's good to go now. But man, what a freaking nightmare. So uh, I did a couple other things too. 
I'm gonna be uh, about to do the clutch side. We're just gonna get that all together, get the bottom end entirely done. I took the parking brake off because I don't even know why people put those on, like or leave them on. Especially it's a '99. Like you kidding me? I couldn't believe that thing was still on there. I had this parking brake block off. That was actually from the 250R when I bought it, but it fits a 400DX. It just cleans up the back really nice. Got rid of some of the cables and stuff that we're not using. That Electron carburetor took that off. This is all cleaned and greased up. Or not greased up, but, uh, you know, oiled up. I put um, our rockers and everything in, built a cam cover, surfaced that. All right, let's set up our primary drive gear and our new timing chain. This is a super heavy duty timing chain from BP Racing. So this is the new one, right? See how thick that is? And then check out the old one. The old junky Mickey Mouse OEM one. Junk. So this is literally, I would say double the strength. It's gotta be, I mean, it's like double the thickness. Now we're gonna use our tusk clutch holding tool to hold the inner hub while we tighten this thing up. I love this tool. I'll have this linked in the description below. Honestly, it's worth buying even if you're only doing one engine. It's like 10 bucks and it enables you to torque this down to the correct tightening torque. It's just, it's a great tool to have. And if you're doing engines, even like frequent, even infrequently, but just sort of, I mean, dude, it's just, once you have it, you can't live without it. Once one tool, to get that close one tool does all motors you don't have to get like one of those custom uh, clutch discs that holds like the inner and outer hub for each and every machine it just makes sense to have in my opinion this goes to 80 foot pounds there we go so easy to use oh my god i can't believe mike's putting a used clutch in oh I'm gonna leave a comment, tell him what an idiot he is. That'll show him. Well, I just realized that I completely forgot to put my cam chain slider on, which goes behind the clutch assembly. So that's awesome. Basically, it's just a little bolt and a spacer and it holds this in place, but you have to do it before you put the clutch assembly on. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that off camera real quick. All right, let's get the cover on. We're gonna put our dowel pins in place. Put a little bit of anti-seize on there. It's just kind of like a courtesy thing for the next guy that comes and takes this engine apart so he's not like, you know, cursing and swearing when these things are seized. Now, if you know who's getting this quad next and you don't like them, this is definitely a step that you would wanna skip. This, this is just not my day. I forgot to put the oil pump gear in. <sighs> okay, so that is finally all good to go. I'll probably find out that there's some critical component missing after I get everything else together, but that's okay. So I got all the stainless steel hardware there. I also came over here and just switched out all of our hardware so that it matches. We got stainless steel over here. I cleaned up. I took the gasket off and then cleaned up the surface up here, uh, cleaned up the dowels and everything. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the piston and the cylinder on. All right, let's go ahead and put our piston on. Got a little bit of assembly lube we'll put in there. Got our JE 11 to one high compression piston. All right, now we'll put our piston clip in. Got eye protection on because I just did this the other day with the YZ125 and it flew out and literally almost hit me directly in the eye. So, I mean, it might be a good idea maybe to wear eye protection. And like always, you wanna make sure this is completely clipped in the groove and you usually want the opening at the bottom or the top. Put a fresh gasket in place. Before you put your cylinder on, I'm gonna throw some lube in there. I'm actually using Beanol two-stroke oil, it'll work just fine, trust me. 
Plus it'll smell really good. You wanna make sure you check your ring gap and everything before you put your cylinder on. I've already gone ahead and done that. All right, piston is good to go. You can see I surfaced this. I surfaced everything that I possibly could. Even though these are new parts, it's just a good habit to get into. If you've got a surfacing block, why not? That piston looks freaking sweet though. Now before we put the head on, I wanna do a little bit of work to it. So this was sent to me by BP Racing ATV, and this is actually a blem. I don't know if this was dropped or what the deal was with it, but they didn't actually completely finish this. Steve had told me about it and I was like, dude, just send it, I'll clean it up, it's no problem at all. So they didn't wanna put this one on the shelf to sell to a rec to like a regular customer. Uh, but for me, it's perfect. This was ported. Now, like I said, it's not uh, entirely finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. You can see, honestly, it's it's very good work. I'll show you the intake over here. It's got a little bit of a texture to it, but it's very smooth. Some people like to make it a little bit smoother. I'm gonna leave my intake. It's, it's really not that rough. You can barely feel it with your finger. Uh, it kind of just looks rough. They took down the valve guides, which I would have done anyways. And then there's a little bit of a ridge on these valve seats. I like these to be really smooth. I can, I mean, this stuff you can't really see unless you feel it, but there's just a tiny little bit, little bit of a, a ridge in there around the edge. I'm gonna clean all that up. I like that to be ultra smooth. Both sides need it. And then I'm gonna polish up the exhaust side a little bit. I like to make those a little bit shinier. One other thing is this intake boot. I actually didn't have this part. Uh, they had this on Amazon for one day shipping. So this thing will bolt on and believe it or not, it's actually, it's pretty damn close. I already have had it bolted on there. There's a very small ridge. There's little bumps and stuff. Realistically for, for a stock unit, nobody would even notice. Uh, I would say these aftermarket, I guess this is like a Chinese one. These are actually pretty decent, but we're gonna, I'm gonna bolt this on and then I'll go in there with my porting tool and I'm gonna make sure that the transition from this intake boot into the actual intake of the cylinder head is super smooth. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I ended up doing quite a bit of work on this head. I went real smooth in here. No ridges whatsoever. You know, this is, again, this is kind of stuff that it's tough. Like you guys really can't appreciate it without actually seeing what it feels like. I'm gonna have to get a flow bench to show the difference. I took a pretty good amount out of here. I'll show you guys from this angle. I wish the camera would really focus in there, uh, but that should flow really good. And then on this side, I left the texture for the intake and this intake boot, all the transitions are nice and smooth. There used to be ridges and stuff. And I also bored quite a bit out of this boot. Even though the opening wasn't that far off, I opened that up, but the boot was a little bit restrictive. So I kind of opened and tapered the entire thing. You can't just have an abrupt opening and then all of a sudden it gets smaller. I mean, you can do that, but it's not gonna be, uh, performance wise, it's not gonna be optimal. So you have to taper it, which is what I did. So I just tapered the whole thing. You know, this should perform really well. So our head is pretty much in order. I'm gonna go ahead, put the kibble white valves in. I've got kibble white springs, put those in too. I got some kibble white keepers. It's just, uh, it's gonna be a really solid head. <laughs> solid head. All right, so let's go ahead and put one of these valves in. I'll show you how it's done. So first we'll get the right valve. We've got TL, TL. This is the one that I had matched to that one. Before I put that in, we're gonna go ahead and put our valve seals on. Just these little cups that go on top of your valve guides. Anytime you have your valves out, you wanna replace these things. They just pop on top. I like to give them a little bit of a spin. Just make sure that they're seated all the way. Really easy to do. Sometimes on like 450s and stuff, these things are recessed quite a bit. They can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get on, but the 400EX is really easy. So take a little bit of assembly lube, put it on our valve and push it in place. Nice. And we've got a valve seat spring washer. Then we've got our inner valve spring, outer valve spring, our top. Now I've got this huge valve installation tool. This thing works really nice. If you don't have this, um, honestly, <laughs> I don't know if you could do it. The one portion goes on the bottom of the valve and then the top portion goes on the top. Get that in place. I'm hoping you guys will be able to see this. I take a little bit of grease and put that on the end of my valve keeper and that sticks to it. All right, and then once they're in there, you don't wanna open up the clamp 
uh, the shock will make, usually will make them pop out. So just slowly release the clamp by unscrewing it. And that usually seats them just right. So this one is nice and seated, ready to go. You wanna make sure that these are good and flush. Uh, one isn't like cocked to the side or anything or not fully seated because you don't want that thing popping off. But you also notice there's a little bit of a, a bigger gap on this side and then over here they're butted up against each other. Uh, you might have some old school guys or people telling you that they need to be equally spaced. From what I understand and from what I know, that is not true. When this engine runs, they're gonna move around. So you could put them in there completely, perfectly spaced and uh, they're just gonna move back in any orientation that they want. So just make sure that they're um, seated completely. So now we can put our head on and see I've studded up our cylinder. These are heavy duty studs from bpracing.com. If you guys wanna pick these up, I highly recommend them if you're doing any high compression or big bore, or even if it's a regular bore, it's just a safe option to go with things like that. You're gonna to wanna to anti-seize these before you put them in. And also you can see we've got little dowels that go around them. That's another part that you wanna anti-seize. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, put our gasket on. These go on dry, or at least that's the way I do them anyways. Man, if I was a mechanic and I was paid per job, I'd be hemorrhaging cash right now because I forgot to put the other chain slider in, the cam chain slider. It goes underneath the head and it cannot be put in without, you have to take the head back off to put this in because it's got these two pins, damn it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in, but just, what the fuck? All right, we're about ready to turn the key here. Adjusted our valves. Got the Zoom Zoom carburetor on there. That is an OEM replica carb. I got a 180 main in there and a 48 pilot. Uh, we're just gonna start from there. That might be a little rich. I don't know, could be right on the money. And we're just gonna fire it up and see, we just wanna see if it runs. And if it runs, then we can go ahead and start you know, finishing up this quad. Before we move on, I wanna thank everybody for making it this far into the video. I wanna take a brief intermission to thank the companies that helped make Project 426 EX a possibility. BP Racing, Rocky Mountain ATV, Lion Parts, DRW Performance, Third Axis Racing, and AP3 Racing all helped by providing parts and services to make the 426 what it is. These are companies that I trust and use on a regular basis. All applicable promo codes will be listed in the description below. One more thing, if you're enjoying the video so far, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, let's get back to it. All right, now we're really just going for a Hail Mary here because I didn't check for spark or anything and the wire harness looks kind of janky on this thing. So, I don't know. The kill tether, I have a wrench stuck in that because, yeah. So let's just see if it works, man. Kill switch is off. I think there's enough fuel in the carburetor that uh, we sh it should start up. Let's see if it even turns over. I feel like I'm starting to get pretty good at this motor building thing. That's the second one in a row that has started right up. I mean, that was, if this was a kickstart, I feel like that was first kick. But you know, you know, I say something like that and then the next one around, it'll probably explode like a nuclear bomb like the second I press the start button. So let's just uh, be happy for this one. So I think we're gonna move on and I'm just gonna start tidying things up. I think what I'm gonna do next is clean up the wire harness because that looks like trash. And I also want to straighten the steering stem. A subscriber sent me a DM. Um, he had an idea for straightening that and we're gonna try it out.
So this is actually a little bit worse than I thought. So here's the steering stem. It's dirty and looks like crap. Uh, guarantee that will clean up the same way that these A-arms cleaned up. They're not perfect, but they sure look a hell of a lot better than they used to. I replaced these junky bottom bolts that were, I don't even know what they were from. You can tell that this has wrapped around a tree at some point in time. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick it up. But you can see this one's like a little bit of a different shade. It looks like these are chrome plated and that's like nickel plated or something. I bet you he uh, destroyed that one and then had a replacement made and they either put a different coating on it or it was like a different batch. I don't know. So I didn't notice this before. Uh, I can fix that, no problem. But what the, the thing is, I think this is bent back slightly. In fact, I'm almost certain that it is uh, basically because these are facing up so far. This definitely needs to come forward. If I pull the carburetor and um, take the air box off, I think I can get in here against uh, this main portion of the frame and then just come right over top of the engine and get right up here. I, th I think I'll be able to do that. Press that forward, weld it up. That should be good to go. And then as far as the steering stem goes, but you can see it's bent back quite a bit up top. And then it's slightly bent sideways. If you guys can see at the top. Yeah, you can definitely see that. It's just to the left side. So I think I can straighten this out myself. This is a really nice steering stem. I'm gonna guess that it's a Brigard, only because everything else on the quad is Brigard, uh, but it's not marked or anything, but like the flag and the welds, really heavy duty. This is a great steering stem, definitely worth saving. And then the shock absorbers, these are gonna clean up nice too. Uh, I'll probably take these work stickers off, not because I don't wanna rep the company, but they just look like trash. I'll take those off and then I'm gonna clean up uh, the shock bodies and then I'm gonna clean up the reservoirs. All right guys, check it out. I got this thing blocked up and ready to go. I had to take off the carburetor and the intake boot and now it's just barely sitting on top there. I have this strap over top just so that this whole like unit doesn't go up like that and like fly up you know, in my face. It's very in line. It's not like arced or anything. So this should put uh, direct force right up to this and bend it forward. I put a piece of, um, it's actually an old edger blade on there, a flat piece of steel so that the um, the jack doesn't drive into the wood and split it, even though it's already split. Here we go, man. I'm gonna take it nice and easy. You don't want anything to break. I can already see it's bending it straight back perfectly. I think that's it right there. Probably what I'll do is go just a little bit further because there's gonna be a little bit of spring in the steel. It's where it's, I'm sure it will go back just a little bit. So I'm gonna go just a little further forward. And then I think we're good to go. I'll tack this thing up, we'll call it a day. Dude, check this out. It literally came out like perfect though. It didn't leave any dents or anything. I thought it might dent it by putting all that pressure in one spot. Cause I mean, dude, I put a ton of pressure on this. I had to go a little bit beyond straight and then let it off. Just like with the frame, there's a little bit of spring in this metal. I literally think this is perfect. So that is a saved steering stem. Good thing I didn't send it to a machine shop because uh, I don't really think it could be any better than that. And here's our frame. So you can see the silver touch-up paint I used doesn't match quite perfectly, but it looks pretty good. This stuff is covered anyways. Uh, nobody's ever really gonna be able to tell. You can see where I welded. I ground this one down and put a fresh weld there. And then I put a little tiny support weld on both sides here just to kind of give it a little bit of support. So while that is drying, we might as well go ahead and take care of the carrier and get that all set. And by that time, we'll be able to put our steering stem in, get the front end together, put our shocks on and stuff like that. All right, guys, so check this out. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but you'll be able to hear it. So it seems to me that the bearings are definitely shot. Even if the carrier still has life left, we got a new carrier, we might as well swap it out.
Oh man, we got a mess here. I just ended up taking the swing arm off entirely because it's pretty dirty. I mean, it didn't really have to come off, but I want this thing to look nice and clean. So I figured it would actually be beneficial to take it off entirely. We'll be able to clean all inside here and stuff. Uh, it appears to be in pretty good shape. We'll probably peel these stickers. They're kind of cool, but they're peeling at the edges. And I don't like it when stickers are peeling. I think it makes it look crappy. So we'll remove those, probably put a different sticker in its place after we're done cleaning it up. Anti-fade was caked with all kinds of like, it was dirty grease kind of deal in there. This is all the hardware and stuff. I'm gonna put that in the tumbler, clean it up. Skid plate, I was gonna run this, but dude, this thing is all twisted up and there are cracks in it and stuff. It's, it's, it's shot, man. Seriously, this thing has seen some some uh some gnarly trails for sure so i think what i'm gonna do i just uh, actually ordered up i got a skid combo that came with the rear skid and a belly skid because this is going to be i'm designing this to be a trail machine so the skid plates are kind of necessary might as well just throw some fresh ones on there and then the axles over here this other hub is seized so i heat i was heating it up at the torch hit it with some pb blaster and i'm letting that soak for a minute sprocket looks like it's in good shape all this stuff just really needs to be cleaned up it's just got grease and stuff all over it and i'm pretty sure i can make this come out really nice i also got the shocks done over here cleaned them up really really nice i got these clamps up here to kind of turn them into piggyback shocks i think that gives it a really cool look the suspension felt good just jumping up and down on it as the quad was sitting the bumpers look really fresh and the way that these cleaned up i don't think these things need servicing so i just cleaned them up x on the exterior uh, like i said i think they came out really really nice that's really going to update the look of the machine so i got my work cut out for me we're going to clean these parts up polish up what we're going to polish up any bearings and stuff need to be replaced i'll replace them and um, then we'll get the stuff back on there Oh my God, these things are seized in here. Look at all that rust buildup. There were no seals on the inside. So tons of water and stuff got in here. I have a new swing arm kit on the way, but my God, these things, I really hope I don't have to cut these out. This is, the swing arm's gonna be a lot of fun. I've decided it's a little bit too far gone. This is all rust inside here, it's not dirt. So I'm actually gonna recoat this. I think I'm gonna make it red. Oh my God. It's here guys, it's finally D-Day. Check this out. All the parts came out really nice. All the hard work is done. All the refinishing, replacing bearings, all that stuff is totally done. It's just time to assemble everything. Refinish these Nerf bars, got the brand new Nerf bar nets in there. Those came out really nice. We actually managed to save those things. All of our hardware is right here. You can see the way that came out. Take a look at this swing arm, man. I'm not sure if you guys are gonna be able to see how vibrant this is. Just looking in the camera screen, it doesn't look like it pops quite as much, uh, but this is like a, a fire engine red. It was called safety red, and it matches the Honda kind of red orange almost perfectly. It looks great. Got brand new bearings and uh, spacers and everything in there. Those had to be replaced. Got the niche carrier. I don't think we'll have an issue with that. I've been running the eBay carriers for quite a while. You know, if you're racing, maybe no, but I mean, realistically, these things are pretty solid. Got the Pro 4 Link. Right here, we're gonna set this on the softest setting. So we'll get the most amount of suspension travel and uh, that should be really nice for hitting rocks and stuff. Cleaned up the other piece of our linkage. Axle cleaned up really nice. I never got this hub off. Dude, I'm telling you, man, I had a really long cheater bar on here and the whole bench was like flexing, trying to get this off. I think it'll be easier to break this loose once it's actually on the quad and it's got, you know, things attached to it and I can like jump up and down on the bar. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I'm trying to get that off. This was quite a bit of work. You can still see 
It's not perfect. There was a good amount of rust and pitting on this. It's still a great axle, but as far as the finish, I think really the only way to save this would be to send it out to get nickel coated or chrome plated. I don't have time uh, to be doing that. So I cleaned it up really good. And then I put a clear coat on it to help preserve that so it doesn't rust again. So for a budget fix in the garage, I think we're gonna be just fine. The anti-fade, that cleaned up really nice. I pulled this apart. It was like um, that great, that like thick, greasy dirt. Disgusting. All this stuff is nice and clean. We're gonna put the ASV levers on there. Got a billet gas cap here in here from Tusk, a Tusk um, front master cylinder cover. We'll put that on. Got a brand new tail light too, because I thought that old tail light looked like crap. So I just got a brand new OEM tail light we're gonna put on there. Got a DRW case saver. I don't run any machine without those. If a DRW is available for the machine, I always put it on there. Highly recommend those. It just saves your case no matter what. Also, check this out. I got a uh, an OEM cover. <laughs> Kind of like sacrilegious. I got an OEM and then cut it immediately. These are literally the cover and brand new gasket is under 20 bucks brand new from Rocky Mountain ATV. And I just think for two reasons I wanted to do this. It cleans up the look. I think just having an open air box kind of looks weird, kind of looks empty. And you can see like back here, there's plenty of space for stuff to splash through. I mean, granted, if we're smashing puddles and stuff, stuff's gonna get through, but this is gonna make it, it brings the edges up a little bit higher and it's gonna be less likely to get water and stuff in here. I really want this thing to be like the ultimate puddle smasher. I've been that guy driving in a group of people and hitting a puddle with like pod filters or I don't have like a very good air box and you end up sucking up water, bogging out, and you're sitting on the side of the trail for like 20, 30 minutes with your air filter shaking it out and having it dry in the sun. I just trying to completely alleviate that. I want this thing, like I said, ultimate puddle smasher. I also put the new seat cover on there, looking pretty fly. And I did some saving on the rims, polished them up a little bit. Didn't go crazy with them, just cleaned them up and I got those nice chrome lug nuts. These things really look nice. Did all four of the wheels. So uh, we're about ready to start assembling this thing. What I'm doing right here is quite possibly the most important thing to do out of this entire build, and that is anti-seizing your swing arm bolt. If you've ever had a 400EX and you've had a seized swing arm bolt, well, you've probably come really close to wanting to end it all. It's that bad. So make sure you anti-seize your swing arm bolt. I'm getting ready to put the linkage on. I wanted to stop to take a second to look at this because this is a nice piece. Look at that. Something about billet aluminum, man. This thing is sweet. Pro 4 Link by Third Axis Racing. So what's cool about this is it has the adjustable link right here. Plus 3.5 inches, plus 1.75 inches, factory, and minus 1.5. By choosing longer travel, you increase the leverage to the shock and a smoother to get a smoother response, best suited for GNCC and trail riding. By choosing less travel, you decrease the leverage on the shock and have more responsiveness, best suited for small racing to medium, small to medium jumps and flat tracks. So I think what I'm gonna try is the plus 3.5, which I have it set up for like that. And uh, we'll see how that works on the rocks and stuff. All right, so the skid plates are on there. These were by no means an easy install. I uh, had a couple of different things. So typically with aftermarket stuff, it's normal that you have to do a little bit of, you know, changing stuff up. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, this was actually touching the disc brake. So I had to put spacers under here. You can see now we got plenty of space. So that's good and solid. This actually has good fitment, like the, um, the way the sides are folded up and it uh, hugs the frame. That all fit really nice. The holes lined up well. What I had to do though was notch this out on both sides to fit the Nerf bars. I kind of anticipated that that would happen. I would give these skid plates 50-50, 50% good, 50% bad. The price was great. It was 135 bucks. I think it was actually 130 shipped for both of them. The fitment's really good. Like the holes are lined up and stuff and I think they're gonna do a good job. The hardware that came with them was kind of chintzy, but the construction is pretty solid. The welds look good. 
I like these braces back here so that these don't fold over on you. So we'll have to see how well these hold up, but I would say 50-50, good for the money. So let's get to it, man. I think, um, I think all we have to do is put the plastics and the graphics on. Yeah. I'm cleaning up these plastics. I wanted to stop and show you guys for these like um, little warning plate things. I mean, they're kind of lame to begin with, but um, if you want to at least clean them up because they kind of get that yellowed color, I have lacquer thinner in this bottle. Lacquer thinner, you can get pretty much any hardware store, even Walmart has it. Uh, but you take a little bit, put it on a paper towel, and then we're just gonna lightly brush this and you can see it's clearing it right up. You don't want to do this for too long though because it will eventually It'll eat through like the uh, the clear vinyl that's on there, whatever it is, and um, it will actually take the print off if you go too long. But real quick, just wiping it like that, it freshens them up and basically makes them look like brand new. And then you can see here, these are the glue lines from the old graphics. We wanna get that stuff off before we put the new plastics on. Lacquer thinner cuts it really easily and it won't harm your plastics either. You gotta be careful where you use this stuff though because um, some other materials, it will like totally destroy it. It'll like eat through paint and stuff like that. It's great, it's a great paint remover. excited man I am getting excited I think 400x is probably probably the most experience I have is on a 400x literally I used to ride one back in the day and I just find myself on these things a lot man it's one of my favorite platforms of all time just take a look at that thing though man it really cleaned up super nice I'm happy with it man you guys have to let me know in the comment section below what you think of the graphics kit? Yeah. I still have this tag on here. I just think that looks legit. <laughs> it kind of makes it look like it's new, but I should really take that off real quick. This is crazy. This is literally, this might be the first time this thing has been put in gear and ridden in like 15, 20 years. hear the skid plate rattling a little bit. Probably have to tighten that up. Ooh, that's nice and smooth. The quad feels really good. Really nice and tight. like we 
might have uh, we might have hit the mark again with the jetting. Let's grab our go bag here and we'll take this thing in the woods and see how it handles. The rear brake, we'll have to, I have to um, bleed that and the skid plate, I'm going to have to either like tighten it down or I might have to pull it off and put like bumpers under it or something, like uh, rubber pads. again with the jetting <laughs> like on the first shot shitload of torque. This pull's pretty good though. Like on demand. Let's try a little, let's try logging a little bit. Yeah. Feels good. So if anybody doesn't know, uh, I'm actually supposed to get surgery on my shoulder uh, like literally next week. And even just doing this little bit of riding and hitting these logs and stuff aggravates my shoulder. I have a torn rotator cuff. Uh, it's completely torn in one section and uh, it's just never going to get better on its own so I have to get it repaired. And luckily I have enough strength that I can do stuff like this. Pulling is not really an issue, it's pushing that hurts. Um, but at least I can give this a little bit of a test. machine though. Well, I just got stopped by the cops. 
That's them right there. So I gotta pack it up. Unfortunately, this is something that I face. In this area, it's just impossible to find any place to ride where, you know, somebody, it wasn't the cops, it was somebody complained. If somebody complains, they gotta, they gotta come get you. Well, there's not much I can do about that, guys. That's just what happens sometimes, you know, people call the police. But anyways, uh, at least we got to do a little bit of riding. I wasn't really able to get it up in the RPMs or anything. I think we barely even touched third gear in the woods. There's just no trails cut back there or anything, and there's lots of logs down that are covered by leaves and stuff. Uh, and as you can see, uh, I really don't have, I can't be back there cutting trails and stuff because somebody's always got to call the cops. As far as the machine goes though, we don't even have to wind this thing out. Uh, I can tell it runs really good. I think we got the jetting spot on uh, once again. Uh, what I'd like to do is take this up to Poconos and hit some rocky trails and stuff. But the big thing with this was um, whoever gets this quad next, uh, I don't want them to have to run race gas. I would prefer they run race gas. I would say this is a 95 octane and up. Uh, 100 preferably, but it doesn't need like 110 or anything like that. It's got the 11 to 1 compression piston in there, but that's it. Uh, that's why I'd say 95, 100 octane, you're safe. Um, but if you really had to, you probably can get away with 93. I'm not recommending that, but uh, you probably could get away with it. Now, unfortunately, next week I'm getting my shoulder repaired. The unfortunate thing is for six to eight weeks, I'm going to be in a sling. So I'll probably have like, I'll be useless <laughs> as far as uh, riding goes anyways. And I don't know that I'll be really be able to build with one arm either. And then I have probably a six month recovery. They say six months to a year. I'm hoping that I can get it done in like half of that, but we'll see. I just wanted to give you guys a heads up though. Um, I have created a backlog of content. I've been super busy filming things and uh, I have some, uh, some videos that I want to edit that, you know, from, from way back and stuff. So I do have some stuff that I'm going to be bringing out for you guys. Uh, I appreciate all you guys. I want to thank everybody for watching the grape eight video. That thing has like literally a quarter of a million views now, uh, really popped off. I'm hoping this video does just as good. So thank you to everybody that has subscribed. Welcome to all the new subscribers and everything. You guys are awesome. Uh, I really hope that you like this project. Most, most likely what I'm going to do with this, uh, is, uh, I, I don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's supposed to be Matt uh, Hulk Jones and uh, the you know, plans just changed. Then I was thinking about doing a giveaway and uh, I'm actually considering maybe keeping this one and uh, raffling, giving away the, uh, the KFX. I don't know what the heck I'm going to do. So again, thank you to you guys. And I also want to give a huge thank you to all the companies that help make these projects possible. We have RockyMountainATV.com, LionParts.com, AP3Racing.com, and DRW Performance ATV. The next project is actually a Harley Davidson. It's a 1989 Sportster 1200. I've had it sitting in the back for quite a while. That thing has been sitting for like 20 years too. <laughs> so I'm going to pull that thing up. Um, like I said, though, with the shoulder thing, I'm not sure exactly when that's going to happen. I'm going to try to make it happen sooner than later, though. We'll be doing a video just like this on the Harley. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. I will see you guys in the next video. Please give me that thumbs up. Consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you're looking to support the channel even further, there is the option to join. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.